think the questions I get asked a lot is how do I integrate React with Django or how do I integrate Angular with Django? This one is gonna talk all about that. So I'm gonna assume a few things here. Number one, I'm gonna assume that you already know how to build a React or Angular or Vue or whatever JavaScript front end framework. You already have the skills to build those apps. And then also you have already built or have some skills in Django and have worked with models, potentially even built your own RESTful API or a REST API service. Those are things that are required to get this working correctly. So if you wanna know more about the Django portion of this, check out our YouTube channel, joincfe.com slash YouTube. And you can go through this series, try Django 1.11, and then the REST API basic series. That will get you up to date with what you need to do with Django. Now the front end client stuff, those things change often. So if you're using React or Angular or any other front end web framework, um, this is still gonna be relevant for those things. You just have to know that you're gonna be using your API that you build with Django to work with those clients um, or those front end frameworks in, in, in another term. Now, of course, we also cover this in more detail on joincfe.com slash courses. And we have a course that integrates Angular with Django side by side. So you can see how all of that stuff is done. But I think what we're about to do is gonna be really useful for those of you who want to integrate a React app with Django or an Angular app with Django, just in general, and to see generally what we're gonna be doing. And all of this code is on our GitHub. This is a quick link to it. Um, and of course, it's called the Django JS Frontend Integration. And this will be there um, going forward. And it's just a really, really simple thing on how to do. Um, so what I'm gonna do is first and foremost, show you the code. So looking in the code that is there, uh, we see that we have models.py. So I have a very basic model set up here. Um, the reason I have some of the code commented out is just for simplicity purposes, but you know, there's some, some things that you might consider using there. Um, and then I also have that code in the admin as well. And then I like to separate my REST API stuff into its own module inside of an app. Not everyone does that. I like doing it so that I know exactly where my API stuff is related to that particular app. Or of course, components, if you're not that familiar with Django, this is a component of your larger project, which you might be calling your app. Sorry, Django has confusing naming patterns with that. Anyway, so this is a very basic model serializer that I'm using. Here are the URLs for it, a simple list and retrieve view. I'm not updating anything here, uh, but of course you absolutely could. And then finally, views.py I'm using is authenticated or read only. That means that really I'm just reading data. I'm only getting data from these API interfaces, but you could adjust these things based on your client or what you absolutely need. So if you need to update things or delete things in the back end, you could just update your permissions accordingly, and then you'll have to have some sort of authentication. I, I'm not actually covering authentication in this one because that starts to get um, more advanced. If you wanna see that specifically, if you wanna see authentication with a REST API framework or using Django, um, let us know in the comments. We do have quite a few things related to REST API and authentication on our YouTube channel even. So the blog API one, I believe does authentication too. So again, if you wanna know more about building stuff with the Django REST framework or building your own REST API, um, this is not really the place. Okay, so now that we have, we have two things assumed that you have done. Um, so if I've got my server running here, I'm gonna go ahead and look at what's going on. So I've got, my products here, I can actually jump into the admin, see various products, manage them, and do all the things I need there. Um, and then it's just a really basic app as you see here. And then if I go to my homepage, I get a page not found, right? So this is actually where this homepage, you want to replace it with one single HTML page that's rendered by Django. And then Django is gonna call your static files from your static file server and then it's going to render those files on this particular page. So let's go ahead and build that specifically. This is where you're gonna be rendering out your front end. So on views.py, I'm gonna open up a new app called pages with views.py. It's, it's literally just a views file and also templates. 
So other than that, I don't have anything in here. I don't have models, I don't have anything in the admin, and I don't have anything in tests. So what I wanna do here is literally just render one HTML page. You can do this with a function-based view, you can do it with a class-based view. It's really not a whole lot different for either one. So what I'm gonna do is a class-based view, and I'll say class front end render view, and it takes in the view class as argument, which I have imported right here. And then the only method we wanna allow is the get method. So I'm going to put a get method inside of this class-based view. And we're gonna return render the request. And then the template we wanna use, in my case, I already have one set up, which we'll look at in a moment. Front end dash render dot HTML and empty context. I'm gonna grab this front end view and bring it into my main projects URLs. And here it is, this is, I'm using Django 2.0 right now, so uh, definitely take a look at this if you're, if you're considering using 1.11 and below. Uh, but basically the URL patterns changed a little bit for this. Um, so now what I need to do is I need to make a URL that goes to where that front end is gonna be rendered, right? So it doesn't have to be on your root page or your index page. It doesn't have to be there, it could be anywhere else, which we'll look at in just a moment. But essentially I wanna make a URL pattern last. The very last URL pattern I'll have, or the very last URL that I'll write is for my front end rendering. I'll show you why in just a moment. But basically we're gonna do a catch all URL. So it's a regular expression that's gonna catch every URL possible. So we'll do question mark P path dot dot star and no trailing slash, no dollar sign. And then we just render our view here. So I'm gonna have to bring it in. So let's go ahead and import it. And again, I have it in the pages app. So from pages.views import my front end render view. And there you go. That is the path that's gonna render that view for us. And like I said, I already actually have a template for this. So we'll look at that in a second. But now if I refresh in here and return, I see hello world is still working. Um, if I go back into my API URL, which I have there, I can see that that API is still coming through. So if I actually change this, like if I cut this out or copied it and pasted it at the very top of my URL patterns, what's gonna happen? Well, if I go back into this API and refresh, Notice the any URL I use, it's gonna go to that page. Um, that's actually a problem, right? We don't want that to happen, and that's why we use that URL last, okay? So the next thing is thinking about, if I go to API slash products, um, notice that it's showing this up, but if I go to a URL that doesn't exist, like some URL like this, it's still showing something for me. So whenever I do something like this, that means that Django no longer handles HTTP or, you know, 404 errors, basically. Your front end will. So front end does. So basically you have to make sure when you are designing your front end to have it render out HTTP 404 errors uh, or page not found errors and pretty much any other error that might occur your front end is now gonna to have to render them. So even 403, 500, um, your front end will now have to do a lot of the work for that. Now 500 errors might happen in Django anyway, so Django still might show them, so you can still have your project prepared for that, but overall this is actually how you would render one single HTML page that gets all the other paths, but still having your APIs so if you had several you know, APIs that you were working with that you wrote, this is how you would do it. You would just put them above this, this sort of catch-all URL um, right above there. So I'm, I'll leave those in um, just for your reference. So we'll just say like ABC and you know um, cart and just all sorts of things that you might consider putting in here. Um, that's what you're gonna wanna do. That's where you'll wanna put it. So now you're having your API go side by side with the front end render view. Now, the reason I'm not calling it a front end serve view is because by default with Django, you don't want Django to be serving 
your static files. You want to use something like a CDN. Now, if we look at the documentation, we see right in the Django projects documentation, um, serving this is grossly inefficient and probably insecure and unsuitable for production. That is serving the static files through Django. Um, you can check out their deploy static files section for more information on that, but using a CDN or using something like AWS S3, those things are much more preferred than using Django to serve these files. And that's why I've been calling this the front end render view. Okay, so the final thing that we need to look at is the template that's actually being loaded in here. And this is a very basic version of that template. So basically we can load in our CSS by taking it out of this comment. And we can also load it in here. Now notice I still have this static block. Well, there's definitely a way to have Django interact or integrate with these third party static file services, right? So there's a way to integrate Django with AWS S3. There's a way to integrate Django with a CDN. There's definitely a way to do all those things so Django can still sort of load the file or more accurately load the link to where that file is, which will not be on the same server as your Django project. It really, really shouldn't be because of the reasons I just said, but this right here can render it out for you on that live server or you can just go ahead and put the source or the URL as to wherever that portion is. And after you do that, then you're done. Then you have Django being rendered using Angular, using React, using one of those front end frameworks. And you can absolutely come back and reference this if you need. Uh, but I'll, I'll just go over the keys one more time as to how all of this works. Number one, URLs. Make sure your URL patterns, like your API patterns, all of those happen prior to your catch-all URL, which is this one. Knowing that it's a catch-all URL, that means your front end is going to handle the 404 page errors and a lot of the HTTP errors itself. So keep that in mind. And then the next thing in knowing when we render out our HTML page or whatever that JavaScript is, it's a very simple thing. It doesn't have to actually have a lot going on for it. Um, as we see here, this is really just rendering a template. So we could use a template view. We don't have to use this view, but this is just rendering a template. That template there then references your external Angular, React, or whatever front end framework you're using. It will reference that from the server that it's coming from. And that those parts are the most important in making all this stuff happen. So if you have any questions on what we did here, let me know. I, um, I think this is something that I've been hearing so much about. So I just wanted to show you guys what you need to do on the Django side to make these things happen. And of course, other considerations are authentication. Like how do you have your front end app interact or integrate with your back end app? Um, that's something we show you how to do using just the Django REST framework. Um, and then there's, there's other things like, um, you know, how do you actually allow cross site um, request forgery or how do you allow cores to happen with your React app and your Django app? Um, these sorts of things definitely are a little bit more advanced, but again, I wanted to show you just generally how to do it. So if you have questions or you want to see more of this, let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time.